do you know what your maximum allowable drawdown percentage is? Do you know how many trades your system has the ability to lose straight in a row? Are you comfortable with it? Do you know what to do whenever you exceed your maximum allowable drawdown in order for you to cost correct and stay on the right path to consistency? Heck, surely these questions have come to your thoughts whenever you started trading live and you realize that trading isn't as easy as the internet paints the picture to be. Well, today I decided for us to answer these questions once and for all at the end of this video, but for now, let's get to the review. So this, this level proves to be uh, respected in the past, right? But it doesn't mean that whenever we take this trade, it has to uh, give us some type of relief right here, which is uh, a trading opportunity that I'm looking to buy right now. So my trading bias right now is I'm looking to buy this market in anticipation of a relief, maybe back to these levels at 76, 61. So as I go to the lower time frame, mainly this is a structure based trading opportunity. And as you see right now, as soon as the market uh, he headed back to these levels of structure right here, we have a lot of momentum coming off right there. Then we started to have a lot of choppiness um, as soon as we channel down right here. Mainly a channel for me is a sign of exhaustion in the market, right? See this, uh, do you see this left? Uh, this part of the move, right? So since before the market had had channeled down, and let me bring in my uh, RSI indicator back. Excuse me, guys. Right. When you see this part of the move, uh, what do you begin to notice compared to this move we have right here? Right. There's a lot of smoothness of the sellers. Seller's momentum was high compared to this level of structure. Now it's beginning to wane as it goes down and we, we see some a little bit of evidence of bias right now um, entering into the market right now. Or do you say, wait, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit more conservative. So I'll be looking for a retest, which is what I'll be looking for right now. Uh, if you could pay more attention, this let me zoom in. Okay, I'll be looking for a retest of all these lows right here, which would give me a 786 retracement right here. Do you see it right now? Bam. Uh, at least a 786 or a 618 retracement coming back to these lows right here, which is at the end of this channel right now. Okay, then I'll be looking to take a trade in anticipation of an up move the retest of these structure levels and if you wish to take extended targets you you could take these extended targets back to these to that end of that to the beginning of the consolidation we had right now which would yield a total of 73 pips and a, a risk of 11 pips down which would give me a 28 pip risk reward as you have seen on the video that has just played our normal setup is look for in order for us to go uh in order for us to go long into the market oh, excuse me guys well our normal setup in order for us to go long into the market into the market is look for a double bottom higher 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 close then buy right and as you if you paid close attention to uh the video that i posted yes uh, last week on our sunday's market preparation videos i wanted to buy in anticipation of a halt in the market, right? So what did we get right now? Let me put a line on our support level, which is right here. Okay. Let me give you these on our support level, which is right here. So our buying opportunity was in anticipation of a halt right here, not a penetration of this level 
right here because if we are uh, we have penetrated these levels then throughout our trading strategy we have a lower low lower close we have to change our perspective our mindset into a bearish trend which gives us a trend continuation setup in the market okay so as we go to the lower time frame to see did we actually have our lower uh did we actually have our double bottom and a higher high higher close well as you see right now we had an exhaustion right here of a channel right here price broke out okay then we looked for a retest of these lows right here in order for us to have a setup of a double bottom and then what we had left is a higher 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 close if you pay closer attention we did we didn't have any higher 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 close so we had to wait right if i put a line on our lowest low right here you would see our new lowest low is invalidated because we have a lower low lower close look at where where we have our double bottom at we have a double bottom but where do we have our double bottom in the middle of nowhere right there are no structure levels in the past where we had our double bottom price has penetrated through these support levels in the past on our daily time frame which gives us a shift in mindset and gives and gives us a my bearish mindset in this case so this uh this double bottom i wouldn't have taken it as soon as price has penetrated these levels and then give it and then get it didn't give us a double bottom in this zone then i just had to stand aside and cancel everything out everything uh, every tool that i've thrown out and then restart all over again so for now as soon as the market opens i i have to i have to be a little more patient because one thing about the market before it goes up the market has to go down and while the market is going down i won't be i won't be selling this will be all the amateur traders chasing the market as soon as the market pushes down this is where all the professional traders will be slowly placing their orders and this all this will be the amateur traders chasing the market and professionals would rather die than to chase the market they will be slowly waiting for the market to give them a better price to buy so say for instance price section does give us a really to the downside and finally we get our over our oversold stage and possibly we might get a bullish divergence which is one of our filters that we expect to see and if we do get a bullish divergence the next thing we want to see on the price section will be a double bottom and after getting a double bottom we will wait for a higher 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 close and at that point we would have had all our filters in check and this will be a point where we want to get involved in the market this way we're looking at a long opportunity so okay <clears throat> so now the next question will be take profit how do we take our profit as soon as we enter for that i use my retracement tool i take it from this x to a assuming that price section terminates somewhere this area i'd have a completion of it and we'll take our position tool say we have an entry somewhere at this point take profit our first take profit would have to be at a 382 back at this level stop loss would have to be below our lowest low after getting our lowest low but assuming it's somewhere below our abc completion we could take it 10 to 5 pips below so we'll be looking at a overall close to an overall 40 great pips worth of stop worth of risk and our first take profit could offer us a total of 122. Now I might you would notice that my partner looked for a double bottom higher 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 close and as you see right now if you have entered right as you see right now price went down came to these levels of structure a little bit of relief in the market 
retracement, you can call it retracement, uh, pullback, any type of uh, name you can call it. Then price came to these levels of structure, giving us a double bottom. On our RSI, we have a bullish divergence, then a higher high, higher close right now, right? We could have had a buying opportunity as soon as price hit this, uh, gave us a higher, higher, higher close, five pips higher than this bar, right? Targets right here and extensions right here. So as we zoom in, uh, let me zoom in. Okay. As we zoom in, it's quite clear that price penetrated through these levels of structure. We got stopped out on this one and this is a big but. But our uh, mindset hasn't shifted. We still haven't had a lower, lower, lower close, lower than our daily uh, daily structure lows, which is on our support levels on the daily chart, which means that our bullish mindset, mindset is still intact. It hasn't changed. It will change if price penetrates those support levels right there, right? If price does penetrate uh, below uh, 1921s, then that's when we still, we will, rather, that's when we will change our mindset and go bearish instead of bullish. But for now, we still are having a bullish mindset. And price came to these levels of structure. We are starting to have a bearish flag right so <coughs> so for now you can still look for a um double bottom right right then a high 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 close in order for you to enter long in anticipation of a retest of these highs right here extension probably right here okay and uh at the, at the end of the day, a trade is a trade is a trade. Whenever you have a setup and your setup is met, you have to take a trade. Even if you have lost 10 times in a row, right? Presuming that your system has the ability to lose 10 times in the row, right? Now, let's go to a whiteboard. Uh, let me explain it uh, quite further, right? Say that you have a risk to reward. Uh, you trade for a risk to reward which is 1 is to 2 so whenever you trade your risk something like this okay and your reward is uh, let me check it uh, it's from whenever you trade okay uh, let me put it there Let's let's assume that whenever you trade that uh you go with the mentality of trading one is to uh one is to two risk to reward, okay? So whenever you trade your reward has to be two times your risk. Okay? So let's presume that your system is um fifty percent correct, okay? So we will go for every five losses you get five wins okay so let's do this um, so we have five losses one one loss okay three losses four losses five losses okay it doesn't seem much uh, it doesn't seem like much whenever you start uh, on one trade because whenever you risk 2% of your capital, you get 4% back of your capital, right? But if you, if you stack it up, okay, just like we, go, we are going to do right now, if you stack it up over a certain number of trades, you would see that for those five losses, okay, it only takes two and a half, uh, three and a half uh, wins to to end up profitable so if you have five wins okay in the row another two 
two gains. Okay. Right. Look at the difference. All right. Now look at the difference. Right. And this is positive expectancy which means that your system has to have a positive expectancy over time it has to, it has to give you a certain number of dollars back guaranteed over time right so you have this much of profit with only a 50 percent trading system which means you only have to be 50% correct over time and you still with a risk to reward of 1 is to 2 risk to reward and you still have the chance of end up adding up profitable in the market right now when we get to maximum allowable drawdown it doesn't mean that over 10 trades okay doesn't mean whenever you place 10 trades let's say let's say you place trade 10 trades okay let's say you place 10 trades in the row okay right does it mean you're gonna win does it mean you are going to win five or lose five no it doesn't mean that you're going to win five or lose five in fact you can and it's possible to lose 10 trades in the row right depending on your system of course if you have gone through a back testing process right so step number one to notice uh, to recognize your maximum allowable drawdown is okay is first you have to know your you have to do your work do your work back test the strategy okay you have to back test your strategy to see if this type of strategy works over time and most importantly to see whether this strategy has an ability to lose a certain amount of trades in a row so you to for you to be aware whenever you come to the market live and whenever you trade to see that it's not something that catches you off guard in fact it's something that you are mentally prepared for whenever you come back and trade to the market live right so let's say with this 50 percent trading system right you get this type of reward and while getting this type of reward you have the chance to lose okay six let's say six uh let's say seven trades in a row in a row right right so while knowing that you have a chance of losing seven trades in a row throughout your back testing process you see that whoa i've lost seven trades in a row while catching the same setup trading the same setup over and over and over and over again consistently i can lose uh seven trades in a row so what's is it a wrong thing or do I need to tweak my system? That's that's the beginner's mistake. You don't need to tweak your system in order for us for you to lose less, right? If your system has an ability to lose seven trades in a row, it's a mental game. Ninety percent of trading, excuse me, guys, sixty percent of trading is a mental game. 
30% of your trading is a money management game, your money management game. 10% of your trading is a systems game, a strategy game. Many beginners look to get strategies while forgetting that it's a mental game. So going into the market live, knowing that your system has the ability to lose seven trades in a row, that's when you would stay mentally prepared and whenever you you lose two, three, four, five, six trades in a row, you never get worked up and try to do something fancy with your system or hop into another, another system and end up sabotaging yourself, right? You stay calm and notice that this system that I have has ability has the ability to lose seven trades in a row but i have faith that over time it will make money um if i trade my setup consistently and i put myself in a position where i minimize my risks and maximize my reward you get to use the commitment and consistency bias into your advantage right knowing that i have to be consistent in order for me to have this type of reward and I have to be consistent during this loss um, this period of drawdown in my system in order for you to get this type of reward um, in the end right but then again there are moments there where you need to step back shut the trading off evaluate yourself as a trader in order for you to come back refreshed third thing you need to take caution of is whenever you okay you exceed your MAD which is uh, your maximum allowable drawdown whenever you exceed your MAD which is seven trades in a row okay excuse me guys i'm not a writer i'm not a typer <laughs> i don't type i trade um whenever you see your ma2 which is seven trades that's when you need to Re-evaluate your trading, right? I'm going to highlight this and make it red because this is very important to me, right? So whenever you exceed your maximum allowable drawdown, that's when you need to reevaluate your trading. St take a step back. Look at what has been going on with your trading. Look at your records, which is record keeping. Bear in mind, whenever you trade live, whenever you trade on your demo account, whenever you trade on your back testing, there's one essential key that you need to instill into your mind that you need, okay, to be aware of consistently and that you need to do consistently, which is record keeping. Professional traders keep records at all time. Okay? So whenever you exceed your maximum allowable drawdown, already you have kept records throughout your journey. So whenever you exceed 7 trades in a row and begin to lose 8 trades in a row, that's when you can say, wait, I'm getting back to my records and see where I have been going wrong and try to fix that um where wherever you can because sometimes it's a psychological issue rather than a systems issue right a system numbers tell you information about your trading so your record will, your records will tell you when are you stepping out of the line as a trader and you have to have certain steps to take whenever you are 
reevaluating your trading right this is what i do uh this is what i do every weekend uh before placing my market analysis before i trade before i do anything else i go over each and every trade that i took throughout the week right after going over each and every trade that i took throughout the week i re i evaluate these things okay let me do this i do three things okay one is that look at weeks trading okay and when you look at this week's trading you, ha you have a look at one okay you have a look at these things first you look at whether first you look at whether you followed your rules or whether you broke your rules okay so i first look at whether i followed my rules okay of e let's let's label it e first i look at my rules of engagement did i follow my rules of engagement whenever i enter into a trade right whenever you look at our sunday's market preparation you begin to notice a certain pattern that happens over and over and over and over and over again which is we look at a certain criteria in order for us to enter into a trade if this if this criteria doesn't happen then we don't enter a trade that should give you a sign that this is a rule based system which is followed consistently and whenever i broke i break my rules that's when i take back psychological issues that I had before I broke my rules, right? Track your psychological during the process of breaking the rules then if nothing is wrong with uh, my psych my psychology and if i find that each and every trade that i placed i followed my rules 10 times 10 out of 10 then i would notice that finally maybe something has changed in the market or something has changed with uh my system because the system has to adapt as traders we have to adapt so we have to realize that systems that we use have to adapt so finally re evaluate okay your system that's when that's when i re-evaluate my system and check whether something has changed and check whether i need to tweak something in my system so first step do your back testing and if you did look at your maximum allowable drawdown then try not to deviate from your maximum allowable drawdown follow your own rules reevaluate your own rules keep records track your psychology during the process of trading and if you break your own rules see how can you change that if nothing is wrong and if something is wrong with your system reevaluate your system learn more about the markets and be and continue to be immersed in the market i hope you like this video and if you did hit that like button below subscribe to our channel if you are new to this channel 
and and share with as many people as you can. So, for me, Mandla, I'll see you on the next trade. Goodbye.